In this video, I want to talk about the graphs of logarithmic functions. Now, we know a lot about the properties of a function and its inverse, especially related to the graphs of those two things. So we can actually predict what a logarithmic graph is going to look like by pairing it with its corresponding exponential graph. So here's a pair we're going to look at y equals 2 to the x and y equals log base 2 of x. This is a function and its inverse. In front of us we have a graph of y equals 2 to the x. It has points at negative 2, 1 fourth, negative 1, 1 half, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. Now because of what we know about functions and their inverses, we know that if the point a comma b is on the function, the point b comma a is on the inverse. So for example, if negative 2, 0 0.25 is on the function, then 0 0.25 comma negative 2 is on the inverse. And let me just plot these as I say them. So 0.25 negative 2. If the point negative 1 comma 0.5 is on the function, then the point 0.5 comma negative 1 is on the inverse. If 0 comma 1 is on the function, then 1 comma 0 is on the inverse. If 1 comma 2 is on the function, then 2 comma 1 is on the inverse, and if 2 comma 4 is on the function, then 4 comma 2 is on the inverse. Now we also know that the function y equals 2 to the x has an asymptote, and that asymptote is at y equals 0. Just going to sketch it in here with a dashed line. Well, if the original function has an asymptote of y equals 0, and we swap the x and y coordinates, then the inverse function must have an asymptote of x equals 0. So I'll sketch that one in with a dashed line. Now we can see that we should be able to draw this function just fine, and we can even show it approaching this asymptote as we go to negative infinity on the y-axis. So this new function we've graphed would be y equals log base 2 of x. And we can also pull in our ruler at a 45 degree angle and sketch in a dashed line for the axis of symmetry at y equals x, just to make sure that these two functions really do look like proper inverses of each other. And you can see that they look perfect. Let's actually write down some properties of both f of x equals 2 to the x and the inverse function f negative 1 of x equals log base 2 of x. So the y-intercept of the function y equals 2 to the x was 0 comma 1. The asymptote was at y equals 0. The domain for y equals 2 to the x would be left paren, negative infinity, comma, infinity, right paren. The range for 2 to the x would be left paren, 0, comma, infinity, right paren, because we can go all the way down to 0 in the range, but not get to 0 because of that asymptote. And then we could also talk about y equals 2 to the x being an increasing graph, and it increases from left paren, negative infinity, comma, infinity, right paren. And it's also concave up, and it's concave up on its whole domain. So that would be left paren, negative infinity, comma, infinity, right paren. Now what about the inverse? Well, since 2 to the x had a y-intercept of 0, 1, log base 2 of x has an x-intercept of 1, comma, 0. The asymptote of 2 to the x was y equals 0. The asymptote of log base 2 of x is x equals 0. The domain of 2 to the x was negative infinity to infinity, and the range of log base 2 of x is negative infinity to infinity. That's with parentheses on both sides. The range of y equals 2 to the x was 0 to infinity, not including the 0, and so the domain of log base 2 of x is 0 to infinity with parentheses on both sides. See how that works? The domain and range just switch, the same as the x and y values. That log graph is also increasing over its whole domain, but its whole domain is now smaller than it was for 2 to the x. The domain of the log base 2 of x is from 0 to infinity, with parentheses on both sides. And this graph is actually concave down, and it's concave down on its whole domain, so from 0 to infinity, with parentheses on both sides. Now I'd like to look at these curves in Desmos, so let's jump over there and take a quick peek. Got the graph of 2 to the x, 
and now I'm going to include the graph of y equals log base 2 of x. And you can see that it's very much like what we drew. The point I wanted to show you was that as you zoom out on this log graph, it looks almost vertical as it approaches the y-axis. It is so steep. Depending on the calculator or technology that you use, it may actually look like the graph of the logarithm has ended because it gets so steep. The graph has not ended. And even in Desmos, if I trace points along the log graph, you'll see that at some point I get an undefined value for the y value. It's not really undefined, it's just so steep that it can no longer calculate that value. So you have to be smart enough to know there is a vertical asymptote there. The graph doesn't really just end, it just gets very, very steep. If we look at what happens as we approach infinity, it does almost look like the graph is flattening out. But the graph is really not flattening out. It is getting bigger and bigger. It's just doing so very, very slowly. How do we know this? Well, we know this because the log graph is exactly the inverse of the exponential graph. And if the exponential graph is increasing forever, then the log graph has to be increasing forever too. Now a little note about using Desmos, there are two ways you can graph something like log base 2 in Desmos. If you have a keyboard with your technology, like a laptop computer, you can actually just type the underscore after L-O-G, and that puts you into the subscript. And then you can type the 2, use a left arrow to get out, and press X. Otherwise, you can use the functions key on the Desmos keyboard, then choose the miscellaneous tab, and use the button log base a. Type the base of 2, move into the parentheses, and type x. Now I have a problem for you to practice. We're going to look at the pair of inverses e to the x and natural log x. e to the x is graphed with four points showing on the screen. These are the points negative 2, comma, 0 0.1353. I'm just going to round to four decimal places here. Negative 1, comma, 0 0.3679 if I round, 0, 1, and 1, 2.71828, or 1, e, right? This is the number e right here. What I'd like you to do is label four points on the graph of y equals natural log x, and then list six properties of both f of x equals e to the x and f inverse, which is natural log x. So pause this video, give this a try, make sure you can do this. Come back when you're finished and let's see how you did. Okay, we're back. I'm going to start by just adding a label to this graph. y equals e to the x, and the second one's going to be y equals natural log of x. That point on the original graph at negative 2.135, let's reverse those coordinates and plot a point at 0.135 comma negative 2. We had a point at negative 1 comma 0.3679, so we'll put a point at 0.3679 negative 1. There was a point on e to the x of 0, 1. So we have a point on ln x of 1, 0. And there was a point on e to the x of 1, e. This is the point 1, e. So there should be a point on our graph of e, 1, or 2.7183, 1. So we've got four points on natural log x. That looks good so far. Now we're going to list six properties of each graph. Let's start with the y-intercept of e to the x, which is the point 0, 1. So this should coordinate with the x-intercept on our inverse function, which should be 1, 0. The asymptote of e to the x is the line y equals 0. It's a horizontal asymptote. So the asymptote on ln x should be the line x equals 0, which is a vertical asymptote. I'm just going to put in parentheses here vertical and on the e to the x, I'm going to put in parentheses horizontal. All right, now the domain of e to the x would be left paren, negative infinity, comma, infinity, right paren, which would be the range on natural log of x. So left paren, negative infinity, to infinity, right paren. The range on e to the x would be left paren, zero, comma, infinity, right paren. And so the domain on ln x would be left paren, zero, comma, infinity, right paren. Just a couple more properties. We know that e to the x is increasing on its full domain. 
that would be on left paren negative infinity to infinity. And we also know that it's concave up on its full domain from negative infinity to infinity. Natural log of x is also increasing on its full domain, but remember it has a different domain now. So it's increasing on left paren zero comma infinity, right paren, and it is concave down on that whole domain. So it's concave down on left paren zero comma infinity, right paren. Finally, I thought it would be good if we practice just a bit with our graph transformations and a graph of a logarithmic function. I'm hoping that you remember everything there is to know about graph transformations and that you'll pause this video once again and just jot down how you think that each of these functions is going to differ from the graph of f of x equals log x. Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, we're back. Let's start with g of x equals log of, in parentheses, x plus 8. Here we've done a replacement. We've replaced x with x plus 8. So this has to be a horizontal transformation, and it moves 8 units to the left. So f moves 8 units left to make g. Next, u of x equals log of x, just the x in the parentheses, then plus 8 on the outside. Here we're doing something to the function log of x. It's on the outside. When we have something on the outside, it's got to be some kind of vertical motion. In this case, we're moving 8 units up. So f moves 8 units up to make the function u. The next function is p of x equals log of, and then in parentheses, negative x. In this case, we've done another replacement. We replaced x in the original function with negative x, and we know this is a horizontal change. It's reflection horizontally. So f is reflected horizontally over the y-axis to make the function p. Next one is h of x equals negative log left paren x right paren. Now the negative is on the outside of log x. The log x part is completely intact, so this is going to be a vertical change. In this case, f is reflected vertically over the x-axis to make h. And last, c of x equals 5 log x. Once again, the log x part of the function is completely intact. The 5 is being multiplied to the outside, so this is a vertical change, and in this case, 5 is stretched stretched by a factor of 5 to make c. To recap, when we look at the graph of a logarithmic function, whether it's log base 2 of x, natural log x, regular log x, or some other base logarithm, we will find that the graph has a vertical asymptote, and an x-intercept. It may or may not have a y-intercept depending on whether that graph has been transformed over the y-axis. The domain of a logarithm is going to be all real numbers, and the range will be restricted by where that vertical asymptote falls.